You can now follow me on all my social media platforms to find out who my latest guest will be. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notifications button so you're notified for when my next podcast goes live. I'm not going to say I'm fearless because I'm fucking not. You know, sometimes, especially the climb I just done, three weeks before, I was crying in my bed because I was in fear of death. But then when I got to the couple of days before, I accepted it. I accepted my fate, I accepted death and just got on with it and managed to do it. So I'm not fearless. In fact, I'm the same as every other human on this planet. But um, when you say you accepted death, is that meaning you're accepting to die if you fall? Oh, I'm, I'm not preparing to die, but I'm ready to die. As a young offender going into uh, a London prison, a lot of um, the young offenders want to know what gang you're from because it's all gang related. So I have my first, second day, three people, I'm getting my blue bowl, get ready to be ready to go and uh, go serve a term around. There's three fucking men in my cell, one holding a prison shank, one wearing one of them uh, towel around his head and saying, what gang are you repping? I'll just say what I've done and they say, oh, fuck off. And they're just testing you, just seeing how we're testing wars, seeing mm -hmm. if, if, is this guy someone we can, Billy. Yeah, exactly. It's someone we can rob from, someone who we can victimise. Um, so the first week was testing the wars. I had people testing me the whole time, the whole time going into the landing, the exercise yard. Yes, Boom right. bada on today's guest we've got George Thank King. Thank you, mate. How are you, Georgie? Very well, mate. All the better to be here. Good man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Watched a lot of your videos. Yeah. Climbed the shard. That's right. Biggest in London. Sent to prison for it. Yeah. People call you a daredevil, but you're also an extreme athlete. That's you right. you run um you're doing hundred on ultra marathons. That's right, yeah, yeah, yeah. What hundred mile runs? Yeah, hundred K. Hundred yeah. K is the biggest I've done, but I'll keep one up in the ante. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll give a shout out to my boys from Bite uh, White's Beaconsfield. Yes, yeah, who sponsored. Ollie, yeah, yeah, Ollie and Toby, two great guys have sponsored the show many times before. I love mm. them to bits. Flying yeah. high in life as well. Yeah, likewise, yeah, yeah, yeah. You bring good company, my brother. Thank you, thank you, I appreciate it. How's life? Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah, coming out of lockdown, did a climb in Barcelona about three weeks ago. 112 metre climb, tough climb. Took four, four months to prepare for it. But once I was there, did it, got away, no arrest. And now we're here. <laughs> <laughs> and that was in Barcelona. That was one of the tallest in Europe, I believe. Yeah, one of the tallest in Europe. Yeah, it was It was a tough climb. You know, slippery, a bit dusty. Had to wrap my hands up quite really tightly with um, hand wraps because of how sharp the panels were. Um, a physical and mental endurance challenge more than anything. You know, yeah. that's really when it comes down to what I do. It's not necessarily a technical climbing maneuver, Alex Honnold, what, what have you. Really what it comes down to is mental endurance and physical endurance. Yeah. yeah. So we'll touch on how you get into everything. Yeah. I always go back to the start of my guess, where you grew up and how it all began. So I born and bred in Oxford and as a kid, always curious about fear. What is fear? How can I overcome fear? How can I utilize fear? I remember my first experience with fear was when I was 11 or 12 years old. I was walking in a wood near to where I live and there's this scout camp and they have this seven meter what high climbable me being me just by myself no ropes thought fuck it i'm going up that went up it got halfway got stuck and in that moment i was only fucking three meters off the ground but i was like i'm gonna die i'm holding on the fear had taken hold of me shaking hyperventilating vision going blurry i'm fucking gripping on um and then in that moment i think well if i don't do something now I'm gonna fall off and fucking break my legs or you know break my ankles at the time i thought i was gonna die but really that's the reality so in that moment i took a deep breath i relaxed and that fear suddenly turned transmitted from panic to power and my vision cleared up i felt this new bound strength i managed to climb down the wall got away and i was fucking shaking james and i remember going away from that thinking wow there's something more to the mind and the body than I possibly thought before. And that started the rabbit hole, which I'm still going down now. <laughs> uh, is that where you got your adrenaline kick from a oh, very young 100%, age? 100%, 100%. And that, that's when I was like, you know, there's, there's something about this, let me explore it. And I went into urban climbing, ultra marathon running, 
uh, you know, skydiving, uh, boxing, and you know, just constantly trying to push my boundaries in different sort of ways and test my mm-hmm. test my limits. I'm not going to say I'm fearless because I'm fucking not. You know, sometimes, especially the climb I just done three weeks before, I was crying in my bed because I was in fear of death. But then when I got to the couple of days before, I accepted it. I accepted my fate. I accepted death and just got on with it and managed to do it. So I'm not fearless. In fact, I'm the same as every other human on this planet. But um, when you say you accepted death, is that meaning you're accepting to die if you fall? Oh, I'm, I'm not preparing to die, but I'm ready to die. Um, so, you know, I think it's a very important thing when I go and do what I've got to do to accept death, because I don't want to be going into climbing the building thinking, oh, what if I die? What's my mom going to think? Uh, am I going to go to jail? All this sort of stuff. All I want to be thinking about is the next hold, the next hold, the next hold. As soon as I start corrupting my thoughts with what could happen, then that is ultimately taking away the focus from what I'm doing. Do you fear death? Um, I fear death. Do yeah. you? I fear death, yeah. That's yeah. mad, man, for yeah, a man of yeah. your caliber to do what you do to yeah, then yeah. fear death. Mm-hmm. But do you think you need to, a little bit to try and keep you, oh, yeah, your yeah. T- not toes on the ground, but keep level? Because if you didn't fear it, then... Do you think you can become more reckless? 100%. Complacency in what I do as an extreme athlete is the number one killer. When you look at all the extreme athletes who have died, if it's base jumping or free solo climbing or whatever it is, they all fly doing the easy stuff. Yeah. The cutting edge, climbing El Cap or what have you, they got that, got that in the bag because they're focused, they're prepared, their mind is in the game. They die climbing the easy thing mm-hmm. or jumping the easy um, cliff, you know? Yeah. Um, they don't ever die doing their cutting edge number one thing. So really what I do to keep my survival thing is acknowledging risk. Whenever I go and do something, no matter how easy, if it's just climbing up a crane, I look at it and like this, although it's an easy climb, this is so dangerous, I could die. And that in itself allows me to not be complacent and keep alive doing what I want to do. And I want to do this for the rest of my life. So I want to, I want to be, I want to have grandchildren, Long you know? Yeah, yeah, and that, yeah like, it's I important. And of you, a lot of boxers as well. Yeah. And a lot of them tend to, when they're underdog, they fight harder. Mm. They, they train harder, they're more focused. But when they're fighting somebody they, who they're favourite to mm. beat, the kind of level of intensity goes down. Mm. And they don't perform as well, so yeah, it's yeah. all kind of it's all kind of linked to the same as it's just pure focus. Where mm. your focus goes, your energy flows. So, how focused do you want to be? How focused do you mm. want to be the best? Mm. How do you want to survive this? Mm. And we spoke earlier about ultra marathons mm. and runs. I've got a fifty k this yeah. this yeah. in two days, and yeah. it's nothing to do with the the engine. Yeah. It's the mindset. It's like, mind, yeah. I'll hit a couple of wobbles, and I think, "Fuck this! I want these guys to yeah. run on, so I can jump in the bushes yeah. and then just get an Uber home." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's yeah. the when, once you start pushing through that, yeah. then you start getting used to those those wobbles. Don't hit a certain mm. Mm. miles, and they go further and further and yeah. further. That yeah. the body can go through so much. One hundred percent. Yeah, it can go through so much. It's the brain that then tells you to quit beforehand oh, because yeah. we're built for comfort. Humans are. For, yeah, yeah. For comfort, like, yeah. we love to sit yeah. in couches and yeah, yeah, warm yeah. heating and warm baths. Like yeah. as soon as we want to go out in the cold or whatever, just yeah. go back home and yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to yeah. live like that anymore. Yeah. I've done that for thirty odd years, yeah. but now it's to push myself to the extremes. Yeah, and well, just keep, I see. Keep raising oh, I, I, I see the the ice cold therapy. Mm-hmm. You know that sort of stuff is. I mean, everyone should do it. You know, yeah. young, old, whoever you are, because that sort of stuff is getting out your comfort zone. Like you said we are comfort breed animals, you know, we seek comfort. Yeah. But as soon as you step out of your comfort zone, you see your life grow emotionally, mentally, physically, spiritually, mm. because you're out there and you learn something about yourself. It's and that nature. Is proof. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. nature. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We are, an- we are animals at the end of the day. Yeah. We are, should be in the wild. Like, 100%. The cold water therapy strengthens the immune system. Absolutely. It lowers anxiety, lowers Absolutely. depression, good for the skin, good for the mind. It's like a switch flips yeah. and then you feel alive. Maybe yeah. only for a couple of hours, but it would be good to just feel alive for a couple of hours than it would to never yeah, feel oh, alive. Sure. And that's where a lot of people struggle because they don't have that feeling of feeling switched on. 100%. They're just caught up in a rat race, getting up for work yeah, in the morning, yeah. have a coffee, yeah, 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 come back, five o'clock, 
have that done. I'd watch Coronation Street. <laughs> Listen, if you're happy, then so be it. I just believe there's more to life. I want to leave a legacy. Yeah. I ain't one. fucking yeah. around, brother. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? How's your, Love how, to hear how, that, yeah. How was yeah. your family upbringing? How, mum and really dad? Really good. Really good. You know, I'm, I'm having an amazing mum and dad. Um, and I think really they expected to bring up a kid who <laughs> took the conventional path going through school, university, all that sort of stuff. Um, I wasn't like an unruly kid, um, but I never obeyed by the rules. I kind of always did my own thing, unconventional. And uh, at the beginning of what I did, they tried to stop me, as any parent would. Uh, but when I expressed why I do it, the passion, and the bigger vision, the legacy, they started to respect. They started to respect it, and now I'm at a point where they accept it. it's the only way because I'm going to do it no matter what. So either you're going to fight another never-ending battle, yeah. or you're just going to have to accept it. We live one life. Life is very short. Death is around the corner. Not just for me, for yeah. every single one of us. Yeah, it can be scary though, because especially for our mum, mm. her job is to protect her baby. One hundred percent. Maternal that, instinct. Yeah. Do you know what yeah. I mean? And that's uh, yeah. that is difficult. But even when you're running and stuff, people ask the question: Are you running towards something or running? Away from, away from something same as I'd imagine you climbing are you climbing towards something are you climbing away from something mm. I believe it's both mm. I just believe it's both like you, you are running away from the mental scars yeah. because I don't like running mm, mm, mm. but the, the enjoyment I feel running feeling free feeling alive and pushing myself and then the endorphins the serotonin mm. the dopamine levels yeah. the, the feel good factor just for that day when you the longer you run the better you feel for yeah, two yeah, or three 100%. days like if you go out and do a five miler or a ten mile run you feel great for a few hours yeah yeah and yeah. then you go back and you think shit man like, yeah. what can i do next yeah <laughs> and it's uh, it's scary but i'd imagine the pressure for your mum when yeah. did she realize how extreme you were doing what you do what age i would say around sort of 10 years old yeah because that like, young yeah mate yeah yeah i don't know what it is mate it's some you know we're all built differently different mm -hmm. biologies Jeans, I don't know what it is, but what, my thing is I'm counterphobic. I, 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 I don't run away from fear. I seek fear. Um, when, when the judge sentenced me for six months, I really kind of wanted to thank him because I was, I was appreciative that he was going to throw me into a extreme challenge, you know? So I, I tend to try and seek fear as opposed to uh, run away from it and as as a 10 year old that's what I was doing I was sort of going off exploring climbing trees jumping off into water you know doing all these things mm -hmm. um, which other kids just weren't doing and um, that's just the way I am it's not it doesn't know, mean so. you're a bad person no. but did you ever get tested or anything for yeah. that like no fear kind of mentality that ain't it sad though it because people are different and want to do different things that yeah. then people start questioning their ability because you're not wanting to just be the average kid. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, um, I was uh, tested for ADHD on, when I was around 13 years old. And um, that's the only diagnosis I've got. But I've suffered with insomnia my whole life. And my point of view is um, my mind never sleeps. It's constantly racing. The thoughts are going 24-7. Dreams, ambitions, plans. It's always going 24-7. No matter how tired I am, it's always going. So when I get to trying to go to sleep and I'm left with my own thoughts, there's no sensory deprivation. I've got nothing to distract me. I'm lying in bed and I'm just, and my foot's tapping and I can't, you know, I can't rest. Can't rest. Never. I'm never really in my entirety of my life. Maybe for two weeks after a big climb, but really, I never really felt content. I've when always, are you at most peace with your life? When do you feel at when your I'm, happiest? When I'm in in a state of either, like I said, running. Um, vigorous exercise, cold water therapy, meditation, and in, in ex basically when my life is in my fingertips. That's the only time I really feel relaxed. So I just, I just can't really, you know, watch the TV and just feel relaxed. You know, yeah. it just doesn't work for me. See, I don't like labels either because there's people with no labels out there and are doing fuck all with their life. Mm, mm, so mm. people then say, oh, he's got this ADHD or whatever, but you're still pushing yourself to the extremes to mm. pushing yourself that no matter what label you get, you can still do what you can. I'm yeah. like fr big. F I'm friends with big uh, Tom Stoltman, mm, the Stoltman mm. brothers. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big Tom yeah, was labelled, yeah. and the man's now pushing to be the strongest man yeah, on the yeah, planet. Yeah. I love that shit. Okay. Like, yeah. don't ever label somebody ah, and think that you're not me. good enough, or you think okay, nah, that's yeah. life over. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? All. Prove people wrong. Prove well, the science it, wrong. Mate. The mind can change. Well, my point of view, especially with ADHD, they have the the world and doctors and teachers have this um, notion that 
these kind of disorders must be drugged, must be suppressed. But my point of view is these disorders should be utilized as strengths. I see ADHD as a, a gift. I've used it to push myself with planning and utilize the energy for um, projects. I was put on I was put on Ritalin uh, when I was around 13, 14. And that just, I mean, it solved the symptom, but it worsened the root cause, you know? So yeah. um, I, 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 anyone who believes that, you know, you should be drugged to fit a purpose, i.e. sitting still in class, that's an indication that you sh that school is not the path for you and should pursue entrepreneurism or some different unconventional path yeah you know but it's you know doctors teachers they love to push of course they're reading from drugs. their textbooks they're only getting what they do doctors you get into doctor with depression and it's valium it's other tablets yeah, yeah, and then yeah. numb the brain and it tells you on the box that you can actually go suicidal yeah. i ain't a doctor but for me, my life and feeling alive is when I'm in nature. Yeah. Same as I go back to big Tom Stoltman, he diagnosed with autism and never stopped him. Mm. Couldn't sit in the bus going to school. Now he's, he speaks all around the world and pushes himself to the boundaries, yeah. including yourself. So people yeah. watch us and get inspiration. That mm. Don't fucking let a label de define never. you as yeah. a person. Yeah. Like, life is a beautiful thing, but it's also a struggle. For sure. Which I always touch on, no matter what mm. I'm achieving. I still battle that because yeah. like, I'm constantly putting pressure on myself yeah. to raise the bar, to yeah. become the biggest, to become mm. the greatest. And mm. that comes with so much commitment and so much sacrifice that like, no matter what you do in life, that like, everything's about sacrifice. How yeah. bad do you want it? Yeah. Yeah, How yeah, fucking hard yeah. do you want it? Yeah. Work? Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, 100%. When, you, when did you do your first big climb? So my first big Big, big one was, um, I was the f not that many people want to do what I do, but I was the first person to free solo the world's tallest climbing wall um, without permission. And that was a big one because it was, it was sort of untouched territory in that respect. I, you know, I didn't have a chance to climb it with ropes. You don't know if some of the holds are securely on. And I was around 18 when I did that. And I, I didn't sleep the night before just ecstatic with adrenaline fear you know there was so much going on in my own head I just didn't sleep going on sleep deprivation did the climb got down I didn't sleep for a week afterwards because mm -hmm. I was buzzing so much off it that was um that was a really special moment for me and from and I took a lot of time like you said with the sacrifices to train and prepare and get ready for that and once I experienced that I thought okay this is this is my new norm you know this is what I do now. I set big goals. I set big challenges, the shard buildings, some which haven't been done before, some which have been done for, but are hard. And this is what I do. I set the challenge. It's tough. I don't really know how I'm going to achieve it, but I'll put it down into a plan, put it down in strategy and take it step by step. And eventually I'll get to that goal. So that's my norm. And that's what yeah. I just do. How much preparation goes into a tough climb? Is it weeks, months, or do you have a kamikaze any? Um, so with the shard as a case, that was the first dream, the pl seed was first planted when I was around 13, when I first saw it and I was a crazy dreamer. I remember just, I just putting loads of dreams down on a list, putting it on my wall, climb the shard was one, one of them. And um, that was when I was 13. I climbed the shard when I was 19. So the dream, years of dreaming, in terms of planning was a year and it was non, that was my life, you know, I mean, the extent I mean borderline psychotic obsession with climbing the shard it was it was going in different disguises to avoid pattern recognition sometimes in a suit with a with one of them uh, you know one of them bags going into the concierge looking around sometimes it was um uh you know in a sports kit holding a protein shake stretching on a pillar noticing that it go the pillar goes from my wrist to the elbow. Okay, that's my measurement. That's the recce done, right? Go back home, measure that out from my elbow to the wrist. Okay, that's the measurement. Boom. Next day, different measurement. Just getting little bits of information. Trying not to get seen by security. Trying to keep you know a low profile. That took months and months and months until I eventually got to a point around May where I was like, I'm committed to do this. And then um, I, there was a few loopholes, there's a few little problems, and then I ended up doing it 8th of July. So, you know, some climbs are just, you do it and, you know, it's all good. Um, you know, two, three months of preparation, whereas some others can take a whole year. Um, but my whole thing is I can't leave any stone unturned. I want to survive this. And, um, and that's what drives me to just prepare 
every single step of the way. Does the weather come into play? Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I fucking... I've watched the weather like a madman. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, you what know. What happens if you were halfway up and a storm comes that you never thought mm -hmm. would happen? What happens there? Well, there's either there's two options you can do. That's all right. Um, there's two options you can do. You can either carry on or you can stay there and try and wait for emergency services to get pick you up. Helicopter? Yeah, I don't know, mate. I don't How would know. that feel for you? Would you feel like a Very, failure then? Oh, I would. That would defeat. Well, it would. I would feel like a failure. But what I do the next day, I was like, okay, well, I'm going to do it again at some point. I can't, I can't not let this box be open. I've got mm -hmm. a ticket. Um, but touching on the emergency services, you know, I try, if I could sign some kind of waiver or, or contract to say that they don't come, I would. You know, it's, it's the one thing about what I do where it's like a little thing, a lot of the big media people touch on. I was like, oh, you're wasting their time and all that sort of stuff. But really, when I meet them at the top, they're always, always calm. They're all blessed. They all got good smiles. They're happy. You know, it's just, it's just sort of a little spark to their week, you know. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's, it, take it, take it, leave it. Yeah. How, when you, the planning for the shard it says it took months. How do you feel the day when you're just going to do it? The minutes before that, do you, is that when you feel alive when there's yeah, no more it's, overthinking? It's or, beautiful. It, is that beautiful? Is that when you feel at peace? Oh, beautiful! It's the, <laughs> it's the it's the calm before the storm. You're walking down the street. The police don't know what they're going to wake up tomorrow. The shard security are going to wake up to the biggest security breach of their careers. I'm, you know, the media don't know what's going on, but it's going to be headlines. I don't know if I'm going to live or die. It's this calm before the storm, you can feel the electricity in the air. And, um, and that's, yeah, that is peace. That is peace. Because now I've, I've done all the preparation. It's now trusting the process. I don't have to do any work. I don't have to, I've, you know, I've committed now. So now I'm just, I'm more of a passenger to the process as opposed to being, you know, having free will and working it out. I just let it happen, let intu intuition take the way. And that's a beautiful thing. And the morning of is is a beautiful thing as well because it's just like, you know, it's, it's happening. I'm, I'm there, I'm going to do it and just go with the wave, you know. It's, it's, I, I'm not... I'm not thinking about it. I'm not thinking about the next move. I'm just doing it. It just happens, you know, um, yeah. and that's the beauty of it. How long did it take you to climb? Uh, the Shard, four, 45 minutes. And um, would the crowd start gathering? Did, people, did other people ever think it's a suicide attempt? Well, interesting, with, with the Shard, I did it at five o'clock in the morning. So there wasn't like a big, big crowd or anything i wanted to get get in before the security properly awake and you know the city's mm. awake um so the, you know i didn't have a gopro i didn't have a drone it was just me topless taking on the shard taking on my dream um just no ulterior motive of getting some video out for social media it was just me and my dream and there was beauty in that now after doing the climb I, I tend to wear a gopro i have drones and all that stuff because i'm i'm in a process of capitalizing and trying to make ends meet um so it's a different kind of thing but yeah um i th i think people who look up probably do think it's a suicide attempt but you know i think people still kind of get the picture you know mm -hmm. at some point yeah what did you get charged with when you did you get you never got charged on the day the police um, shook your hand yeah, and then it was, it was weird mate um so I got to the top and I expected to go into the slam for, you know, 24, 48 hours. And I got to the top, put my hands out to get nicked and they put their hands out to shake my hands. So I was showing their hands. Mm -hmm. And then um, I was chatting with them for 30 minutes and they just thought, right, there's not much we can do. So we're going to let you go. And um, I walked into Monday rush hour. No one knew. And there I was, topless still, looking up the shard like I fucking climbed it. And um, it was... Then I went to a police interview, and these were the criminal charges, aggravated trespass, public nuisance, um, trespass on railway, reckless endangerment. Got no charges, didn't even have to go to court. So the criminal thing was a tick. However, that was the straw which broke the camel's back because the shard lawyers were now, fuck him, let's, let's put him inside. Take an uh, example. 100%. And they, that, over the three months, 
they spent over two hundred thousand pounds building up this massive case, you know, to to put me inside. And I, at this point, I was like, "Oh, I'm I'm done." You know, the police haven't said anything. I've got this call. Fuck the call, guy. I'm good. I'm good. You know. So I walk into court quite cocky. You know, I'm just yeah. I walk out. You know, we're all good. And then I go into the courtroom. <laughs> I see. You, you, I kind of smelt it before I went in. It was like there was this kind of. I saw the lawyers. I saw the book. I saw. As you know, I'm going down. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I, I knew it before they said it. I was like, this, yeah, this is something, something going on here. And yeah, I mean, really, I think the string was tied before I even got in. I think they, the judge had made his decision if they speaking to them or I don't know, but yeah. Does that make an example of you? Because even though you know what you're doing is making you feel alive, but you can understand all the charges and the trespassing and the, oh, yeah. all the shit and yeah. that. But six months, man. Fuck's sake, there's people out there doing worse than mm. get a slap on the wrist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does that make you feel right? Like, okay, I'm going to do it again, or does it make you step back? Yeah, no, no. Though this here's the thing: put putting in me inside was probably the opposite to deterring me. It mm -hmm. turned me into a fucking savage. It sort of empowered me. Fueled you? Oh, fucking one hundred percent. I I was in my prison cell writing down all the climbs I'm going to do, writing plans, every single thing, just obsessed, you know, working out in the cell, doing all these <laughs> things. I was just, I was just fueled, it fueled my madness. How did that then for you being caged up like an animal? Did you ever think, like, not, it's not a fucking as if you got a life sentence, but yeah. did you ever look at things and say, I could probably escape from here? Oh, well, I did it to keep my mind active. I um, I, I planned an escape uh, just, just because of, there's no fuck all to do. So I was just like, uh, I, I started writing out escape plans and like, it, it, could I go through G wing? Could I go through? Could I? What about exercise yard? Looking around, just just to keep myself busy. <laughs> <laughs> you think you could have got out if you wanted to? I, I, well, <laughs> I, people have what, a couple of lads escaped from H and P Patnaville, um three years ago, so it's definitely doable. And the way I saw it was it it was doable. However, if I were to jump from the wall. I would have 100% broken both ankles. So really, I could escape, but I don't think I will get very far. Yeah, yeah. Do you have a photographic mind? So, so, if I, no, 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 no. no. I, 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 um, I'm, I'm an obsessive planner. That's my thing. My whole life is is a plan. I mean, um, you know, everything's a calculation. But um, I don't, I don't have that gift, unfortunately. But what I do do is I write things down constantly. So in my on my phone, I'm constantly making notes. I'll make notes after this. I'll make notes tomorrow. I'll make evaluation notes tonight. In the morning, I'll make everything. Gym notes, notes, notes. I'm always writing things down so that when I have to look back on something, I don't really need a photographic mind. I've got my notes, you know. So yeah. that's that's my thing. How were you accepted in prison? Um, initially it was you know people as, as a young offender going into uh, a london prison a lot of um, the young offenders want to know what gang you're from because it's all gang related so i my first second day three people i'm getting my blue bowl get ready to be ready to go and uh, go serve a term around there's three fucking the men in my cell with one holding a prison shank, one wearing one of them uh, towel around his head and saying, what gang are you repping? I'll just say what I've done and they say, fuck off. And they're just testing you, just seeing how we're testing the walls, seeing mm. if, if, is this guy someone we can- Billy? Yeah, exactly. Someone we can rob from, someone who we can victimize. Um, so the first week was testing the walls. I had people testing me the whole time, the whole time going into the landing, the exercise yard. But after a week, I started building up my connections. I started making my friends and started working out. And it was it was all good from there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because you're a big lad, what, you're 6'3"? Six, yeah, 6'4", six, 6'3". Six, you know three. what I mean? Fuck, yeah. yeah, yeah. You'd be able to handle yourself. You're strong as well. But it's funny how people test you, but I'd like to put these ones holding a blade in the cell on yeah. top of a mountain, see how <laughs> fucking tough they are. <laughs> One thing I fear is heights. Yeah, well, it's natural. Yeah. Is that natural? Yeah. Like, people talk about you like you could have fell in a previous life or whatever. Mm -hmm. That's how you sometimes... Oh, the DNA. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, I don't like heights, but I'd love to. Like, I always try and push myself. When I, when I go on like the theme parts and stuff, mm. 
I struggle to go on a roller coaster. Mm. I don't enjoy it. Mm. People get their hands up and scream. Mm. I'm holding on for fucking <laughs> dear life. But how yeah. do you work on that? Um, well, how like, do you know how to work on it if you've never really felt the fear of heights? Uh, well, I have felt the fear have of heights. Yeah. So I think my view of heights is it's an it's a survival instinct. So I, I believe that everyone is scared of heights at one point because that's what keeps you alive. And if you weren't scared of heights, you probably wouldn't survive in natural selection. So, um, you know, I think we're programmed to be scared of heights because, you know, heights can kill us. So when I first started doing this, I was terrified of heights. But the whole thing about overcoming a fear is not just throwing yourself onto the shard, it's, it's taking it step by step. So I climb up 10 meters, okay, I can do 10 meters, what about 12? This whole thing we were saying about the running, if I can do 12, I can do 14. If I can do 14, I can do 35 and this and that, and I keep on going. And I'm now at a point, I could be hanging off a building 200 meters up, looking down and have zero fear. And it's not because I'm programmed in a certain way, it's because I've just taken it step by step. Mm -hmm. What place would you love to climb? What's your main target? Oh, Can you say? I can't really say, yeah. but at the same time, you know, there's 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 some of the tallest buildings in the world, you know. Some America, built, Dubai. Yeah, Dubai, but I think you would chop your dick yeah. off, man, if you, <laughs> if you do anything there, you don't want to go to prison yeah, there, do you yeah, know what I mean? Not at but all. Would that still be a turn on, knowing that like, you've got the Burj Khalif and... Oh, there's, 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 there's things, the thing about urban uh, in comparison to mountains and nature, and this is what really attracts me, is that there's an Everest that's being built every day, you know, so there's always something being built and um, and there's an ever everlasting sort of journey where I'm, I'm constantly watching what's going on. I know what's got, uh, I've got a list of buildings, you know, and it's it's just part of what I do. I just keep vigilant yeah. on it, yeah. Do you ever start looking into where it gets lenient sentences, where that's not kind of mm. getting big sentences, but it's kind of slapping the wrist? Do yeah. you start looking into that then? Yeah. Once you start getting convictions, then you're going, wait a minute, you're mm -hmm. not learning your lesson. Mm. Six months turns into six mm. years. Mm. I'm not saying you're going to get that, mm. but you are breaching rights. Like if you're climbing up a building and say it's maybe get money in it or gold or whatever, yeah, yeah, is yeah. that potentially where you can, it's not like housebreaking, but it could potentially be a robbery. Yeah. Before you know it, you've got armed response, before you know mm, it, somebody mm, shot your ass. Mm, mm. Yeah, it's, Just things like that, like, mm, do you look into it? Has, yeah, has like anybody ever been shot or to get them down? Or? So that's part of the job really is the legal side. Like mm -hmm. I spent a lot of time researching the legal, speaking to lawyers in different countries, trying to just get to grips with everything so that I can go into it knowing what's what. I actually predicted six months prison sentence. I actually ended up doing three months, but I didn't actually do the full sentence. I managed to get out halfway. Uh, but I did predict six months uh, before I climbed the shard because I looked into it, I researched and there's a video of me and my friend discussing and we said, yeah, well, you could get six months. I was like, yeah, I possibly could. Um, so I know what I'm getting myself into. You prepare yourself for that? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, mm -hmm. I, I, I'm mentally equipped for that. You know, I know yeah. that that's a potential thing which could happen. So the biggest sentence is six months? Uh, yeah, well, for the for the, for the the UK, yeah. that, that's the case. Who holds the biggest sentences? Oh, America, not America's a fucking minefield is that's because there's different laws where the uk is actually a civil offense to trespass not actually mm -hmm. criminal so in order to pr prosecute someone they have to put injunctions on buildings so that when you if you do climb it you're breaching a court order which is therefore criminal whereas in america trespass is straight up criminal you climb a building there you're gonna get fucked, and um, and yeah, I mean, America is a difficult yeah. territory to you know. Would you ever do the Himalayas, or would you ever do like Nevis? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, like mount mountains, they do interest me. Mount yeah. Everest, sorry, mount yeah, Everest. would yeah. you ever do Mount Everest? Yeah, I, I would. Does I would. that not turn you on as much with feet? On it the doesn't floor? turn me on. It doesn't turn me on as much because um, um, the thing about nature is that a lot of people climb mountains. A lot of people do that. Very, very, very few people in the world get to experience this very eccentric feeling of free soloing a building. Um, and that's all ego. That's really, I mean, it's all ego. I, I just like to be someone who's different. Different, yeah, yeah. And uh, I want to experience something unique and special. Um, again, that's that's my own ego working, but fuck it is what it is. Yeah. I, I, I want to yeah. try to do those sort Have of Have you things. ever came close to death, slip? Or anything, or you uh, just, is it step by step, gradually? Or do you ever get to the top and think, or near the top, and you think, okay, I'm going to push it a wee bit further just to get it over and done with? Mm. Does, 
Yeah, um, have you ever came so, close to any serious danger? It's, it's danger non-stop, but yeah. I'm talking about a hand slip or a foot well, slip. Well, not actually in climbing. I had one incident when I was skydiving where, um, so I've got, I've, I've had surgery now on both shoulders, but I had, um, I kept on dislocating my right shoulder. I mean, the labrum was just, I didn't have a labrum when I had my MRI scan. It was just fucking, just the socket, the humerus, I didn't, the bone was just sitting in this loose socket. So anyway, I was jumping, doing a AFF level six or seven, uh, which is like a solo skydiving course. I'm in the air, hit a bit of turbulence, I pop my shoulder and then I, I think, fuck. So I'm trying to pull the parachute, but the, the sort of autonomy can't allow me to reach it. So I start spinning. And I think, fucking you know, hell, looking at the yell to me, I'm going like 3,000, you know, 15, 20 seconds from hitting the ground. And then I've, the instructor comes and pulls a parachute for me. And whilst I'm under canopy, then I smack, smack my shoulder in place, get it in, and then I fly down and land. But that's probably, that's probably when it comes to extreme challenge, that's probably the closest I've been to death. Uh, but at the same time, if I do have a hairy moment on a building, I would have known about it before. You know, my whole thing is preparing. And if, if I had a weird moment, it's like, well, that that should be very unexpected because I, I would have planned for that myself. Have you ever done base jumping? It's something which I plan to get into. Um, but at the same time at the moment, because of how dangerous it is, I don't want too many things on my plate. Otherwise, it get my focus and energy and effort gets diluted and then it becomes dangerous like i said before like complacency is so important to me mm. that if i'm base jumping boxing running and just doing too much then you know i'm diluting the focus and you yeah. know that could be so when you say you don't sleep then is it no sleep or is it you get a couple hours here and there um so i'm getting better i'm working it out when i was a y much younger it was like sometimes i just wouldn't sleep the whole night and i'd be like you know why why did that happen i didn't really understand it now i've researched a lot i actually i i mean i get same amount of sleep as anyone else six to eight but the process i have to do in order to reach that is very long-winded but i'm used to it i maintain it for example i have to no blue light as in screens or anything two out two to hours two to three hours before going to sleep got to have to meditate beforehand um i have to i've got my own little supplements such as melatonin which i which i take and and it's and i wait I, I, my whole thing is waking up at five o'clock so that by the time i get to nightfall then i'm, I'm pretty pretty fucking tired mm -hmm. by the time i get there so it's, it's it's a struggle but it's a struggle which i'm winning and um, it's the same with the ADHD. You know, I, I don't take my med medication. I don't see it as valuable to me. I just work with it. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, I just have what to- What were you like when you were on your medication? Oh, fucking horrible, mate. Just dumbs your brain. Ah, oh, fucking. It robs what, did you, what did you do? Mate, I, Nothing? Was, I was just anxiety, depression, but worse than the insomnia. Couldn't even speak, articulate, or I was tongue twisted. Is, and I'm, I'm, I'm thinking now, looking back on it, fucking hell. So doctors are putting little kids on this. It's basically like cocaine for kids, you know? It's a, it works by increasing adrenaline and dopamine. Um, and it's slow release, so it goes throughout the day. And they're putting kids on this. I'm thinking, fucking hell. There's different ways you can deal with ADHD yeah. than, than, than Ritalin. Yeah, like I say, I'm not a doctor, but nature, man, and ah, even people on. getting out a walk fresh air, it automatically changes your mood. 100%. Do you know what I mean? When it's raining and it's cold, we stay in the UK, it's always going to be raining and cold yeah, sometimes, yeah. but even just getting out in the rain, skin, yeah, the, skin, yeah, yeah. the skin's waterproof, man. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It's a different smell, there's a different vibe. Yeah, like, yeah. I love running in the rain. Yeah, I don't I like it, it when I stop because I'm yeah. freezing, but yeah, yeah. when I'm doing it at the time, oh, then mate, you yeah. feel, okay, I'm living here. Yeah, yeah. It's a great feeling. 100%, mate. I've inspired by Wim Hof when it was really cold back in the winter I'd get, wake up at five when it's the sun's rising uh, being just my shorts um, at the sort of minus five and go for a run topless and I just that that energy feels so primal it's mm. like this is where yeah. we're meant to be and I get back into my home and it's like just something's something's happened in my brain yeah. you know something's something's gone on um and yeah you know it's more people should go take themselves yeah. into nature and you i know. actually just done my first um sunrise uh, we climbed the mountain at two in the morning I saw that, yeah. Class, Beautiful. Mate, honestly Beautiful. That, there's something in that that's why they, they call it the 5am club as well because when you're up earlier than everybody else the air everything's not as polluted mm, so everything so feels true. calm and you, you think differently yeah, like 100 doing that sunrise was i was like oh, this, is, this is that and that when i 
getting up for it. Because I said, right, I'll just stay up for it, but I end up falling asleep and then the alarm went off. I thought, nah, fuck that. Yeah, yeah, and I thought, nah, I'm going to yeah. do that. I <laughs> end up trekking up the mountain and it was, um, it was beautiful, yeah, man. Yeah, but, I can imagine. Because something to do with an excursion, I don't know if it's an excursion or whatever it is, but with the heat in the morning, it pushes the clouds down. Is it? So the clouds are in the middle oh, up below, that's so you're beautiful. always above the clouds. That's beautiful. Something to do with it. I, I might have just got yeah. that word wrong, but the person who I was doing it with says that. Yeah, so yeah. So if the, the heat pushes the clouds down, obviously when the sun rises, the clouds start rising beautiful. again. But being above the clouds and... Um, you can get a ghost in here. <laughs> it was just a great feeling. Yeah. Just bliss. And then coming down the mountain, it just felt amazing. I felt yeah, amazing yeah, that yeah, day. It's, it's combining the the endorphins from coming up the mountain, mm-hmm. the struggle, the suffering of getting up there, just all your lungs are burning. And the reward is that sunrise, that beautiful yeah. serenity. I love I love doing um, sunrise meditations, just like breathing in, being mindful, watching the sunrise coming up, just keeping my focus on the sun. And I go away from that, I'm fucking so clear. I can take on anything, I've got that clarity. Yeah. Um, you know, more people should jump mm-hmm. into that that nature. So. Have you got any role models of that people you look up to? Wim Hof. Wim Hof? Yeah, massively. He's a good man. He's yeah, good jealous man. that you yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, he's a good man. Yeah, yeah you managed Crackpot. to get that connection yeah. because he, he, he's something... I mean, he's going to go down in history as a com- absolute legend. He's changed the books with science. science yeah. He's he's inspired millions and millions of people. He's 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 got something so simple and and so effective and scientifically backed, and which can change the world. I mean, fuck COVID. Mm-hmm. You know, you do your breathing. You can resist an endotoxin. Yeah. You know, uh, this guy is 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 more than just a hero icon. He is is absolute living legend and yeah. um, it's funny it, that they yeah. laugh at him and, and scrutinize him at the start oh, and then did. this yeah. is why people if they come up with new ideas or they try and change science that people laugh at them so much they step back mm-hmm. and don't follow their dreams or their passion mm-hmm. that way at a minute this is right yeah. he just kept pushing forward pushing forward yeah. and then the Looking scientist yeah. says that okay he's right they yeah. injected him with a virus they beat the virus with his breathing techniques yeah, yeah, yeah. injected 20 of his students with the same virus yeah. because they thought okay he's a freak of nature and he changed the game like Cold water or something. And cold water's been about for hundreds of thousands of years. Oh, yeah, like, yeah. He's done his own thing with it, with the breathing techniques. And the breathing techniques is something different. different. Like when you do the 30, 40 breaths, when you do a certain amount of rounds, something in your brain f- clicks as well. Mm-hmm. Like you, you feel that trauma popping up mm-hmm. and it's to push through that mm-hmm. and then mixing that with the cold water. It's nothing that anybody can get in the cold water. <clears throat> it's if you just breathe, adapt to the pain, learn yeah. how to live with it. Yeah. It's like anything in life. And I yeah. always say that when you get into the cold water, the first thing you want to do is turn away and run. Mm. Just like life. As soon as we get an obstacle, first problem, we're soft as shit. We want to turn away and run. But see if you actually just breathe, mm. just breathe. People survive so many of their worst days and they're yeah. still here. So, yeah. so many people are a lot stronger than what they think. And the fact that they don't credit themselves with that, is where the destruction comes in. This is when they'll self harm. This is yeah, when they'll yeah. overindulge in alcohol, drugs, food. Believe in yourself that no matter who you are, no matter what stage you are in your life, you can reach new heights. You can keep changing the game. Like I love the people in their fifties and sixties and seventies. I bought over one of those guys who run marathons in their seventies. Yeah, I love that. Do you know what I love mean? Like just that. Yeah. pushing yeah. yourself yeah. to the boundaries. Like, yeah. So your man's Wim Hof then for uh, not another kind of extreme kind of daredevil well, character you know what it's or is that competition for you it's, it is a little bit it is a little bit you know there are people who i'm inspired by people for sure for sure but at the same time i i i'm on my own little weird World. sort of path you know yeah. this very unique kind of unexplored path and and I, was, I i take bits from people i take bits from goggins i take bits from you know stunt man i take bits from him this and that uh but i'm trying to all go on my own little path yeah. you know and then and, and i think there is a bit of competition i i do see people and think you know who are much older done their career and i think i want to do better i want to do better than that and again that's that's just ego but at the same time we are egotistical yeah. beings you know that's mm-hmm. that's the way life is and and i i do want to be the best i do want to do pioneer things and and i won't stop until i do and that's just that's just my path you know it's just been inbuilt in me you yeah know? that's your visions your goals and it's yeah. the people who you're taking things from they've also took things from other people yeah 100 taking yeah. what's right for you yeah and then mixing your own potion yeah that's it Love and then that. people yeah. go yeah. then people start looking up to you young yeah. kids and go do you yeah. know what 
Mm. I battle through life, but if he's it's making him happy, then do you know what? I want to do that. But it's not just a case of look, getting a set of ladders and climbing up yeah. a building yeah. or climbing yeah. up a crane. As a preparation comes into it, it becomes yeah. a full time job. Yeah, one hundred percent. So how do you survive then? Obviously, with sponsors, White's yeah. Beck and Field guys like that. Yeah. Teeth White and Company, check them out, good guys. <laughs> um, but how do you survive then? Yeah, so capitalizing on something, what I do is is it's a whole sort of business, you know. Uh, I've I've been blessed to get into contact with White's Beaconsfield boys. Um and yeah, they they've they're my current sponsor and we did an amazing project last three weeks ago, uh climbing climbing a building in Spain. And that's that's just that's the sort of one part of the capitalizing process of what I've got. Um, I've got this Channel 4 TV series coming up where I'm just, I'm interviewing, um, you know, a bare knuckle boxer, base jumper, uh, cliff diver. So I'm doing a bit of this, bit of presenting, mm-hmm. all that sort of stuff. And then, um, and then you know, there's there's potential for just progressing on on the whole sort of TV presenter line uh, as well as, you know, social media thing comes in, I could do a bit there. So it's just, I'm trying to pull in as much as I can. Mm -hmm. You know, there's no set salary, you know, there's no, this is what I do nine to five, wake up, boom, boom, boom. Here's my boss, all that sort of stuff. It's more like I try and I'm constantly looking for opportunities and opportunities to capitalize. And it is like what you do with the podcast. Mm -hmm. It's a never ending suffering and struggle seven days a week 24 7 5 a.m to 9 p.m uh but it is worth every single yeah. bit of suffering and a lot of sacrifice sacrifice mental health sacrifice financially sacrifice so many things you know uh just to get the job done mm-hmm. and um and when it, the job is done then it's beautiful <laughs> but it will pay off as well if you're still growing your brand if you like people love that shit mm. energy drinks yeah and yeah. all sort I'm, of stuff Do you know what i mean there, yeah. like you become <laughs> yeah. the biggest and keep creating the name like even though get, going to prison that still creates your name bigger because you're yeah. on like piers morgan breakfast mm. show and yeah what yeah. was he like? What was Piers Morgan like? You know what? A lot of Pete, there's a lot of stigma to him. But what I like about Piers is that he is very honest. Um, uh, I, I really rate that of him. He's not one of those people who are like the Ben Shepherds, very media trained, just, you know, everything sort of, you know, by the book. He's not by the book. He does it his own way. And I respect him for that. And um, fortunately, um, it, fortunately he saw light in what I do he actually respected what I do and he saw the passion he observed the energy of it he he, he saw value in it and we sort of hit, hit it off on the Good Morning Britain and um, I, I yeah I respect him for that How was it when you got on Good Morning Britain and stuff how do, do people then start appreciating what you do or do people do you ever get like trolls and say you shouldn't be doing that shit I think you're always going to get haters you yeah. know but I've any hater I fucking plug it in like a Duracell Jules, battery and I just use it as fuel I yeah. sort of picture their names yeah. picture it and I fuck them I'm gonna do that's it that's what I do yeah. like, I thrive on the hate yeah yeah, I love that's it that's what I love do it. I want people like, to hate me Yeah, I search yeah. for the hate yeah. and I fucking yeah. I don't know that, that's a weird shit about me like, mm. I get so much love now I'm loved like, yeah. people love what I do people yeah. get inspiration yeah. out of the guest that comes yeah. on no yeah. matter who it is but the hate, fuck me, man. That's yeah, what it's fuels good. me. Yeah, you yeah, tell me yeah. I can't do it, I'm <laughs> gonna do it. Like I just yeah. I feel as if I'm proving people wrong every 100%. single day. Yeah, like, I'm yeah. always raising the bar. Yeah, one hundred percent. We just signed the leases for our offices in New York, London. I'm taking this shit global. Yeah, and yeah, that's again I'm not doing it for the people who show love, I'm doing it for the people who hate. Yeah. This is what absolutely. I'm doing. What the fuck are you yeah, doing? Yeah, do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, it's like, yeah, fuck yeah, you. It's, yeah, it's yeah. childish, mate. It's, it's so childish. childish it's but <laughs> do you know what? I'm human being. Maybe so, I will change one day and I'll learn yeah, to be. Yeah. Do you know what? Don't give your energy away, but it's got me this far in yeah, life. For sure, Why change for sure. it just now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean? absolutely, mate. I couldn't, couldn't <laughs> say that better myself, mate. So yeah. going forward for the future, Georgie boy, where's, um, what's your plans? So like I said before, base jump is very much in my line of thinking, but I don't want to rush yeah. into it. I've got to take it slow. Um, I've got lots of buildings in plan, some which I can't, well, all of them I can't mm. speak about because just the illegalities of Would the doing... coppers be waiting there for yeah. you then? <laughs> That's it. That... Well, I actually made that mistake one time when um, when I was 16, I uh, went to um, climb the stealth at Thorpe Park and I put out my, I was naive at the time, put on my Snapchat story and I had this inflatable raft 
um, because it's Thorpe Park, this theme park in the UK, is surrounded by water. And I took a photo of the Dean, I was like crossing over to Thorpe Park, got to Thorpe Park, ready to climb a stealth middle of the night, climbed halfway up, and I already had all the police <laughs> at the bottom, mm. got got caught, and, that, and I, that sort of was my lesson. I'm not going to fucking make that mistake again. So, yeah, when it comes to buildings and all those the legal things, I keep that very much to myself or a very people who are very much involved in, in the project, like the Beaconsfield boys. And um, But no, I, I, I always just want to, my thing is I want to, do extreme challenges. I want to push, I want to go into bare knuckle boxing. I used to fight as an amateur uh, back when I was 13, 14, 15. Um, I see you've got a lot of BKB uh, yeah. fighters on, on, on your Kids show. Fighters, yeah. Boxers, yeah. yeah, yeah. And I, that's, I mean, I, I, that's something I do want to get involved in at some point in my life. I just want to get into the challenges. I just want to get just into the pushing your boundaries. That's it, yeah. It's crazy. Like, I interview like, even the bare knuckle fighters, the gypsy fighters. Yeah. It's like a sense of self-harming as well. Really, to get pushed and getting hit in the head to accept oh yeah oh yeah 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 pain yeah, and yeah it's yeah. like when I was taking drugs that was self harming for yeah, me yeah, yeah, I didn't yeah. like my life yeah. was unhappy yeah. miserable yeah people glorify it and think it's cool to be sitting at parties taking lines of coke and they think yeah. it's great it ain't great because you're self harming that tells me that you ain't happy yeah, in life yeah yeah it's yeah, not 100%. that I'm trying to put people down it's because I've lived that yeah even the cage fighters and had Dan Tull on and. He loves getting punched in the head. Yeah. He fucking loves that. Yeah. Which yeah, tells people to yeah, punch him. But yeah. it's a sense of being psych like yeah, nobody yeah. can hurt me kinda as well. Mm. It's like the mind's nuts. Yeah, mate. I, I, I think every single one of us is got some kind of mental health issue. Yeah. You know, at the end of the day, our biologies have not changed since we were hunter gatherers, you know, but our world has, you know, we've got immediate gratification, we've got social media, we've got, you know, bad mm. foods, drugs, constantly 24 seven, you know, it's, everyone's got mental health issues. Everyone's got them. Everyone's yeah. trying to fill a void um, and some have got it worse than others and some can control it. Some others people say, I'm crazy and I think that's a fair assumption, but I'm definitely not reckless. You know, mm -hmm. everything I do is calculated and prepared. Uh, but, you know, I've got my, my few issues, ADHD, insomnia, all those sort of things, but I, I've found a way to maintain it. And, yeah. and like you said, nature is one of them. The main thing is you're still doing something with your life. Yeah. That's yeah. the main thing. And you know, everybody's crazy. I don't give oh, a fuck who you are. Yeah. I don't care how much money you got. Yeah. I don't care if you're a homeless man yeah. or a billionaire. Yeah. Yeah. The thing is, we've all got the same 24 hours in a day. Absolutely. Do we let it consume us? Do we let it break us? Nah, nah. Life is, life is precious to me Absolutely. now. Like, it took me 37 years to realise this. Mm. It's trying to be happy. Am I as happy as I want to be? No. Mm, mm, Could mm. I be happier? Of course. Yeah. What do I do to be there and get there? Is do things to work inwardly. Meditation, yeah. yoga, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. breathing techniques, cold water therapy. I end up becoming vegan. and yeah, um, yeah. How's that like, going? Is do you know what, mate? I'm fucking flying. It's seven weeks. If I'm yeah. doing 50k runs and something's right, if yeah. I'm mixed up... If I, now, I don't know the science behind it, mm. but what I do know is when I interview people and they believe in it and it's changing their lives, then wait a minute, I'll put yoga together with being vegan, with doing cold water therapy, with meditation, with exercise. Mm. If I put that in my routine every day and it makes me feel alive then fuck me, am I going to keep doing it? Yeah. It is hard to maintain that. Like we can slip back, meditation, getting up at 5 a.m. I've been getting up at 6, and then sometimes I'll not do the 10-minute meditation, I'll look at my phone, and I'll feel my day is a lot more on edge. Yeah, yeah, but if yeah. I'm meditating, if I'm growing my affirmations and my goals to yeah. remind myself that I'm good enough, that yeah. I am the best, yeah. if I remind myself that, nobody else is going to tell me that. Yeah. I need to keep telling yeah, myself that. Yeah. So if I can put all these wee things, tools and techniques into place and how to change and it's changing my life. I'm not here to preach to other people, but yeah. fuck me, do I feel good? Yeah, Look what yeah. I'm achieving. It's not as if I'm just talking shit. Yeah. I'm living proof that yeah. you can make changes. You're yeah. living proof yeah. that you can kick on. And that's the beautiful thing about life. Yeah. People change science consistently. Yeah, why not well, whim off? You we know? ain't fucking doctors. Yeah. yeah. But we're just living by example that, do you know what? I've got ADHD, but I'm still climbing mountains. I'm still fucking <laughs> jumping off planes. I'm yeah. feeling great. I want to do cage fighting. Yeah. I want to run yeah. marathons and ultra marathons. Yeah. Like, People go, do you know what? If you can do it, I can do it. And that's the beautiful thing about life. Yeah, yeah. What about relationships in that, George? Well, I try and Struggle keep, with them? Yeah, well, I mean, I try and keep them kind of short, but respectful. Yeah. Uh, because at the end of the day, my whole thing, as I've said, is is focus and preparation. And if I had a, a long-lasting relationship, well, that energy is going to be going into that and therefore yeah. I'm neglecting the energy going into what it is. So it's always going to have to be short and sweet. Yeah, it's uh, difficult to win it because I'm at that stage. I want a relationship to really settle down. But then I think 
I give them a lot of my energy away. Yeah. So then yeah. the focus doesn't come on the obsession yeah. to be the best. Yeah. Well, it's just not going to last. You know what I mean? It's so it's last. difficult and it's sad it's, that it's choose careers over yeah, yeah. anything well, else. You at the start of your journey, is you 22? 20, uh, 21. 21? Yeah, yeah. And uh, fucking start a young boy, man. <laughs> your <laughs> yeah, whole yeah. life, mate, yeah, is ahead yeah, of you. But yeah. what happens as you start moving through the gears, you, you grow your grow your platform, grow yeah. your name, yeah. before you know you're getting books, before you know you're getting yeah, films. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. it's all about, man. Yeah, it's the vision. Them, That's what them. I would be doing anyway. Like, yeah, just yeah. keep progressing, keep yeah. raising the bar, yeah. keep pushing yourself to new heights and, and keep proving people wrong. That's you it. You know what I mean? That's it. For anybody that's struggling just now, Georgie boy, what advice would you give for them that's maybe can't get out of bed or battling? Well, my first advice, like when I overcome a fear, so take it step by step. You can't get out of bed because you're just completely, you're, you're worn out, you're depressed, your friends committed suicide. You can't get out of bed. You're staying in your bed all day. You're depressed. But you've got to take it step by step. Your first goal needs to be to have a shower. Once you've done that, okay, cool. Next thing, go downstairs, have a cup, make a cup of tea. All right, next step, all right, make a meal. You know, you can't just expect, right, I'm going to, go and do it. I'm going to go out there. I'm going to go to school, go and do my work. I'm going to do all that stuff. That's too much. You've got to take it step by step. Break it down. Break it down. Take it step by step. After one month, two months, you're going to get to where you were before. Um, I think when it comes to anything, people want a short fix. They want to, they want to viral, be famous, quick, this, Love Island, all these sort of things, quick, quick stuff. But really, it's all step by step. And if you neglect the steps, you will pay for it in the future so um yeah when it comes to mental health issues i think yeah take it step by step get out your comfort zone mm -hmm. how does your mum treat you now how does she accept that um, she better with it she's definitely better with it than she you know than than she was when she when i was first doing it she sees it for what it is she respects the passion and the courage of it and she appreciates the fact that i'm not just doing it to i'm not just doing it um, for myself I'm kind of I'm trying to capture I'm trying to make something of it I'm trying to trying to sort of I don't want to say career because it's, it doesn't feel like a career um, I'm trying to you know capitalise and make it work for myself and she respects that mm. and um, we've got a really good relationship um, despite what I do Can you speak to her a lot Does she, like, after that? And yeah well I don't tell my mum before I do a climb because it's just unnecessary I'm going to do it anyway it's no point stressing her up until that point but once the thing's done I can then speak to her because therefore yeah. I'm safe, I'm alive, I'm good. You Does know? she know when you're going to do a climb though? She'll she probably feel it, your energy it. changing yeah, and it, okay, yeah. he's planning something, mm, you probably yeah. went quiet. Yeah, yeah. Because I've seen videos in your room that's just paperwork after paperwork, yeah, yeah, yeah. photos, yeah. written stuff yeah, down yeah, and yeah, yeah. How much paper do you go through? Oh, loads, mate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, loads, mate. Yeah, yeah, all on the wall. I, my, it's, when it's all in the mind, it's all in a laptop or something, best thing to do is to take it from a concentrated platform and just put it up on the wall so that I can put something up on the wall and I can get my my friends or people who've got sharp minds I can be like right let's discuss let's look at it okay not that okay move this there not that one this one there and all that right now so it's once it's all on the wall or all on the ground then I can I can see the plan much more clearly mm -hmm. so yeah I'll, I'll go look go through yeah. a lot of paper in that process for anybody watching this because I know listen you need funding to and you need backing to get to where you want to go and do what you want to do who would you ask for for anybody that's what may come forward and help you out or sponsor you? Um, may as well I mean, utilize no, I, the platform to your advantage. Oh, I mean, I'm, 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 I'm a, wouldn't really ask. I mean, if 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 what someone were to see what I do and they they see value in it, and I, I can I can assure you, you speak to me and we can work something out. You know, I, I don't really have anyone in mind, but if someone thinks that I have value. I would appreciate that for sure, yeah. Yeah, because you see these people, base jumpers and that, and they're, they're, they've got sponsors. Mm. Do you know what I mean? People yeah, are sponsoring yeah. them to travel the world yeah, and do their yeah. thing. Like, you're a good guy, man. I like you, you, George. You're a, I, you're, I a like genuine, you too, man. you're a genuine guy, man, and I can sense that. And this is only the beginning of your journey. Appreciate do you know what it, I mean? It's a, it's a beautiful thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, would you like to finish up on anything, my brother? No, not at all, mate. I've, if you want to follow what I do, my Instagram's at shardclimber. Uh, but apart from that, you, you stay tuned and yeah, I'll, I'll be What about back. Twitter, Facebook? We'll leave all the links in the description. Um, it's George King on, on Facebook and YouTube, George King. But my main platform at the moment is Instagram, which is at, at Shah Climber. Mm -hmm. yeah. We'll leave all the links in the description. Thank you, much. George, listen, it's, been for a pleasure, mate. it's an absolute pleasure and I look yeah, forward to seeing pleasure, what mate. you do for the future. Thank you so much, God mate. Bless you, brother.
Check out more of my podcasts on the right and be sure to like, share and comment your thoughts on this week's podcast. Thank you.